Right, so um, what is available to weight the nose of your um, aircraft uh, if it's a bit of a tail sitter? Now I've had a few uh, of my models that are tail sitters, notoriously the, the FX148 uh, camera uh, for instance, uh, which I zipped up and then suddenly realised that it needed weighting so I had to open up a panel underneath and, and weight it and everything, even if when it comes with a, a rear stick to hold the back up. But something like this, which is one of my practice models, uh, which is um, an Airfix Hunter. Um, now, uh, that's going to be a tower sitter. I can just see that. I've, I've never built it up, um, but it's just there for me to practice weathering and things like that. Uh, but I'm sure that that will be a tower sitter too. Um, it's an old Airfix kit as well, raised panel lines and everything. But it's just one of my practice ones. Um, so uh, we all have to see what we can use to to keep that nose down. Uh, now there's loads and loads of different methods that um, anyone can use, uh, loads of different things that you can try. And here's, I've just put together a compiled list of the things that I've actually tried and that I've got in my uh, man cave to be able to use for waiting. And I've progressed from one thing to another, to another, to another. And like you do with modding, you try a lot of different things and then you find the thing that actually works for you. So first of all, um, I'm going to use the old favourite which is uh, lead. Now, good thing about lead is it's very easy to shape, bend, cut. You can cut it with a pair of scissors. Um, it's heavy, you know, has a very good weight to, to size ratio um, and it's pretty much ideal for most of your uses. Uh, problem is with lead you can't buy small bits of it or if you can I can't find any. This was a bit of lead that I found lying around in my dad's garage a little while ago. Um, and unless you want to climb on a roof and steal it and get uh, get risk getting caught by the uh, by the police, then uh, you don't want to be getting little bits. Um, you know, I've got to usually buy it in rolls and things like that from from builders merchants. And lead's quite expensive these days, so um, it's not really cost effective because you're not really going to use. Um, I mean, that was the amount that I used in a Canberra. Um, and that's probably about 100 grams or so. Um, and that's probably the most you're ever going to use in a model. Um, nine times out of ten it's going to be, you know, half that. Um, problem with this is as well, you have to flood it with CA glue. Um, I think in two, two 148s I used half a bottle of this uh, just to get it together. Because it's flexible, um, it does, and it doesn't really bond well to the lead. Um, you have to, I, really, I find I have to flood each layer, put it on, leave it, you know, and so on and so forth. So it can be a bit of a pain with that. But that side, you know, is the old favourite and um, it's well, the one that everyone has probably used at some point or another. So that's the good old lead. So old, good old fashioned uh, lead. So, uh, you know, that's, that's probably a staple. And one of the other ones that I picked a tip up years ago from uh, YouTube are these. Now these are uh, wheel weights that when you go and get your wheel balanced at um, uh, a wheel centre or a tyre centre or something, this is what they put on the inside of the rim to, to make sure that the wheel balances when you're going down the road. Now these, um, unfortunately, they come in two sizes which is a 5 gram and 10 gram. You can get bigger as well. Uh, but as you can see, they're quite a size. I'll just put them by my thumb now. So they're, they're quite a big size, the 10 gram ones. Now they're only ever any good um, in larger models, say 132, 124s. But the good thing is, literally, all you do is, let me get an old blade one, is you just come along, um, you cut them off like so, and it is that simple. And the good thing about these is they're very easy to place, as, as you can see. Um, and uh, they're very easy to stack as well. You literally just peel off the back, stick them to that, and that is as good. You think that's going to stay on a road wheel through thick and thin. Um, the, the bonding properties of the uh, sticky stuff on this is excellent. So you can pile those up in all your available spaces. Same with the five, five ground weights. Again, you just peel off the back, stick it together, and you can cram it in all the nooks and crannies. Problem is with this stuff is you can't cut it. It is solid, um, uh, but you do know exactly how much you're putting in because they're marked. Um, but uh, but yeah, so 
they're, they're, they're good for larger models and I've used them quite a bit and uh, I would thoroughly recommend them. Again, the thing is you usually have to buy quite a bit of it, minimum five or 10 pound investment, but you do find that you do use a lot of them uh, if you do a lot of larger modeling. So they're definitely worth it. And they're good for, you can what you can do with these as well, you can get, if you've got a 135 tank and you want to weight it down, like Tamiya do with their 148 ones, you, just to add a bit of weight to the model, you can stick two, three whole rows of these in the bottom of the uh, uh, hull on the tank and um, it adds a nice weight to that tank. So uh, maybe if you want to keep it on a diorama or something like that. So they're, they're always handy to have and a good addition. Um, next, um, we you, there's the white tack or blue tack method. Literally, just basically, um, you know, molding this to the shape you want it, put, popping it into the, the actual um, aircraft, into the nose or something. Again, this is only something really you can use on large aircraft. So anyway, you'd shape this to your thing and then you can put uh, whatever you want inside it. You can put a coin, obviously not a five pence piece, it's not very heavy, but a pound coin, you can slot that in it. You can slot some lead in it, some nuts or, or whatever you like. Um, so it's a good medium for doing that, but it's not very weighty for the amount of space it takes up. But if you want to just mold it to a certain area, maybe a type in something, then it is quite good and very handy to use and, and cheap to, to find. It's about a pound a, a, a bag. Um, the other one is, is nuts. Now I have a, a lot of nuts, some big, some small. Um, these are quite, these are a nice weight um, to, to go in models. Again, larger models uh, and things like that. Now, these are half size weights, uh, so they're not, they're not full, full size uh, thickness. Um, you can get full thickness ones as well, uh, but I find that they just, they, they, they get in a, a few extra places, okay. You go down, now these, I actually use these as uh, shakers for um, in the Vallejo large primer bottles. Uh, these are the perfect size um, and you just drop them in. I don't know if you can hear, you can hear that in there. And if you've ever had this stuff, you'll know that it sticks all around the edges instead. But if you can see with one of those in there, it doesn't stick at all. Perfect mix, ideal. Um, so I've got those for that, but they they add as, they double as weights as well, and then you've got the smaller nuts again. These are M5s, um, and again these you can use these get in smaller spaces. You can pile these in, okay. Um, you can put as many of those as you want in. They're quite cheap. I mean for 200, they're about one pound eighty for 200 nuts. Um, I actually use these uh, to go inside. The AO paints, literally, you just open that up, take that out, pop that in there, and there you go. Close it back up. Now I've got dirty fingers, and literally, as you can hear, and that mixes the Vallejo paints perfectly. So, uh, when every time I use open a new um, top of Vallejo paint, that's what I pop in it. So, so they're again excellent for waiting um, and uh, a really easy easy find as well. You can get them from most DIY shops, eBay. I mean those those were one pound eighty for two hundred and fifty off of eBay with free postage. So excellent excellent um, deal. The next one is ball bearings. Now these again very easy to find. You can get these off of eBay uh, for a couple of quid uh, for a thousand. I think these are three pound for a thousand. Um, as you can see there. Okay, now I get one eighth of an inch size. Uh, these are cycle bearings. Um, you can get them from your circle shop as well, so they're very easy to find. Um, but as you can see, great little things. Very easy to pour. They will find every nook and cranny in your thing. They're the perfect size as well. Um, and they will find every nook and cranny wherever you want to put them in your nose or, or whatever. And they got to be careful because they go everywhere. Um, be careful not to drop them on the floor and then stand on them. You see, all seen the cartoons, uh, but they're they're very handy. Again, as you can see, there's a thousand in there, believe it or not. That's only half a tub. Um, they're very good to use, uh, very handy as well. As, as I say, they're not only they can get pretty much get anywhere in a model. Now, the new one on the block is a liquid gravity. Now, this is a new stuff that I bought from um, Models Are Go. I think it was about four pound fifty. Um, and in here, inside, you've got, um, this is going to be very difficult to show you, 
but you've got there you go thousands upon thousands of tiny teeny tiny balls you see um, and literally I mean there must be God, tens of thousands in each bottle um, now it's actually got the weight and the properties of lead but it's not lead I don't know what it is um, I haven't found, been able to find any literature but the good thing about this is where they're so small literally you cut the nib off the top of the bottle here um, and you can just pour it in okay and you can pour it into any space take this hunter again and see so you have to weight that nose there literally you just pour it in into that little space now a lot of times you've, you've zipped up a plane and think shit I've got to, I've got to, I've got to um, weight that see what you would do is drill a hole in the bottom you could fill it up with these so you'd only have to do a very tiny hole not like a big hole you would with normal ball bearings or anything tiny hole fill it up with this and then it's a quick fill over the top to cover the hole and job's done uh, with minimal fuss and minimal damage to your model but these will go anywhere and everywhere the only trouble with is you have to watch out they don't fall out of your cockpit and things like that um, the other the other um, method to use is I don't have any in here but is a uh, lead split shot which the uh, fishermen use as weights and it's pretty much like this but in a larger size um, and again they're very cheap easy to get older from any angling shop um, and that's another good method and another way to pour stuff in but they don't go as small as those I mean those are absolutely minuscule um, but overall my favorite out of the lot is those for the smaller models and the, the 148s and the 172s for anything else than that you're looking at ball, ball bearings nuts and and the wheel weights um, they're just because for pure ease, easiness now to fix them all into place easiest things PVA glue literally you pour your stuff in first pour your balls in first or your ball bearings or whatever then fill it up with PVA glue leave it in obviously an upright position like that to dry um, leave it for I would say a couple of nights just to make sure the PVA goes off properly um, so it's not moving when you go back to it um, and then once you've got the PVA and then it's dry you're, you're well away but that's easy but that'll add weight as well you know so um, overall um, the PVA is all you really need and a couple of these, a couple of different ones, I'll probably have some lipical gravity, some ball bearings and the wheel weights and I think you know that, that and that and that's that's all your weighting problems solved in, in one go there. Um, so that's pretty much it, that's the things that I use for weighting my aircraft, I mean if you've got any ideas let me know uh, but really this is my choice of weapons with these three, four things you can't really go wrong um, and I don't think you'll have any problems with any size aircraft either. Alright, thanks a lot. Take, take care, see you soon.